Hello, hello, hello. I am super excited. This is Dr. Stevie Aisha Mills, and we are back for the conversation with Stevie. The conversation with Stevie is the place where we uncover the why behind what people do. Just to introduce myself, if you are just listening in for the first time, I specifically help Christian women entrepreneurs to make sure that they are monetizing their expertise and knowledge online so that if the world shuts down, their bank account does not have to. And I am uber excited about this conversation today because I have been able to network and connect with this brilliant woman who is about to come on and talk to us today. Her name is Briar. Briar, how are you today? I am so good, Dr. Stevie. How are you? Doing good, doing good, doing good. Thank you. And one of the things I believe to be true is that the best introduction that we can do is one of ourselves. So let me know who you are and what you do in this world, please. All righty. I am Briar Harvey. I am the systems witch. I work primarily with neurodiverse entrepreneurs. That's ADHD, autism, chronic depression, anxiety, you know, all of the fun stuff. And I help them take all of their really big ideas and turn them into a plan of action, literally, with steps and check boxes and nagging, because that is my, ge- my zone of genius. So I'm super excited to be here with you today. Wow, I love that. I love that so much, because one thing is for sure, we all think differently, and the fact that you have taken um, this and really helped people to really connect the dots, because I know sometimes, um, even myself, I've gone into the space where my mind goes faster and further a lot of times than my movements or my mouth. So I'm already thinking fast, I'm moving fast. And so I know how that is, and to have somebody who can understand that and to help um, compartmentalize it and make sense is so amazing. So tell us, how did you get into the work that you're doing? Well, I'll be honest. It happened kind of sideways. It wasn't a niche that I deliberately chose. I personally am bipolar with generalized anxiety disorder, and a little bit of PTSD thrown in for, you know, spite. And my children are autistic or have ADHD, and we've home educated. My oldest is 20. So for a long time now, I've been trying to figure out strategies for myself, for my family. And I had been working as a project manager prior to the pandemic, and then I realized after my client's dream dried up that the commonality that I had was that most of my people were neurodiverse. And when I started talking to those people specifically, it really changed the trajectory of my business. Wow, you said a whole lot there. Um, Even if we could take it to the part about the niches, right? You said you were like, that wasn't initially how it came about, but then you saw that there was a need there, and then you saw that you could specifically speak to a group of people. How easy or hard has it been um, really for you to define that niche? Because it's such a beautiful one, one that a lot of people, I think, um, shy away from. So how has the journey since you chose that niche been for you? You know, that's a really great question. For me in particular, I've had to be very careful about the line between coaching and project management and what someone actually should be speaking to a therapist or a psychiatrist about. And so I think that's a reason why a lot of people shy away from this work And for me, having boundaries and guardrails around what I do has been 
really significant. I have a not ideal client packet for people who maybe need to go see a therapist before they can work with me, where I've got, you know, resources and guides and those kinds of things because just because I've found my niche does not mean that everyone belongs in it, right? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love that. I love the clarity <laughs> because a lot of times, and I don't know if you've seen this in the entrepreneurial world, but a lot of times people will not refer out or not suggest because they feel like if they do, they're losing a the sale and they don't see the bigger picture. Have you seen that in entrepreneurship? Oh, gosh, yes. It's such a real problem. And I think part of it is honestly a little bit of hoarding, right, client hoarding. But a bigger part is this, I think it's a mental block around the idea that there is enough for everyone. And regardless of your traditional faith structure, and Dr. Stevie, I know you are Christian, but God provides, right? The universe provides for us all. We just have to believe that that is available for us. But that provision is always out there. So for me, the more willing I am to say, no, I don't think you are quite right for me, the more my people show up. That has just fundamentally been the case for me since I really leaned into this. Right after the pandemic started, I had to fire a client because he was spewing racist nonsense on Twitter. And I was not available for that. And I was terrified because he was my only client at the time. And the reality of it was making space for the people who truly were my people was all that I needed. I fired him and I picked up three more clients like a week later. So knowing your niche, being able to identify who is your person is important. But knowing who is not your person is what really allows you to call in the best people. It's like an anti-avatar, right? You have to know who your wrong people are to. Yes, and kudos to you for that because some people – are afraid to, for one, fire people, their clients, because they understand um, the financial implications. And then for two, that you took a stand that you didn't have to necessarily do. And, tell, you know, that's brave because a lot of people will hide how they feel, especially when it comes to race and racism and specifically um, the things that we have experienced in this country. So... It, it reminds me, it's interesting about Dave Chappelle and his comedy and the whole controversy that's been going on about that, whether, you know, in any other issue, because we all have diverse thoughts. And I think this is a great way to really um, think about your niche and think about your values and run a business that serves you and to know, you know, that you will be provided for and to also know that every dollar ain't your dollar. <laughs> that was something that um, one of my godparents really taught. He was a great businessman. And I was like, when I heard that, it really changed the perspective because, you know, abundance is out here for everybody. And so we just have to believe in that. One of the questions that I love asking guests here, and um, it is a fill in the blank question, I definitely want to ask it to you, and it is. We cannot leave this conversation today, Dr. Stevie, without people knowing, and then you fill in the blank. Mm, we cannot leave here today, Dr. Stevie, without people knowing 
how important it is that you love the people that you are working with. And I mean that in the sense that you should potentially be friends with your best clients because at the end of the day, what we're building with our clients, with each other in this industry is relationships. And we have to be able to have a real quality relationship if we expect to change someone's life. And I don't know about you, Dr. Stevie, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to change lives. That nothing else, nothing less will get me out of bed in the morning, right? Yes, love that, love that. And I love the fact that you brought up um, what I think so many people are running from, and that is true relationship with their clients. Because the thought, and I, I'm going to ask you if you've ever heard this thought um, out here in the entrepreneurial world, but the thought is if you are friends with your clients, then they won't pay you because they are your friend, and we don't pay friends. Have you ever heard that? I have, and I think it's so sad because I'll tell you, I pay my friends more. When my friends make something and they tell me a prize, I just did this. I am purchasing an, a, an embroidery piece for my husband for Christmas, and my friend quoted me the prize for it, and I'm like, oh, no, honey, that's not enough. I expect you to charge me at least this much money because she's my friend, for one, but also as an entrepreneur, as an artisan, I have an understanding of the time and the effort involved in that work. And so I really want to pay her for what she's worth. So I I really, I, I wish that we could embrace this idea that we pay our friends more because we truly understand better than anyone else the actual effort involved in that work. And the reciprocity is going to come back to you. Like, I believe that in everything, you reap what you sow. And so with that, what you said was so amazing because if we – try to downplay or undercharge or whatever, it's going to come back to us, and more than likely it's going to come back stronger. So I love that. And I also love that you really helped her to understand that she is worth more, and that is huge because it helps to see, you know, that you believe not only in entrepreneurship, not only in friendship, not only in helping another um, woman, but also in the fact of helping people who are out here just not seeing their value. That is so huge. That is that is huge. <laughs> and I think because we have the opportunity for things to happen um, easily for us. A lot of people, what we do comes easily that we have a thought about we can't charge for that. I It wasn't hard for me to do or it didn't take me too long to do. What do you think about that? So part of this has come with monetizing our hobbies, which I'll be honest, I don't agree with. I don't think that everything that you do should have a dollar amount to it. And I think this is particularly true for women because they want to contribute income to the family, and so they monetize their hobbies that embroidery or crochet or knitting or those kinds of things, but they, they don't charge for the time. They charge for the materials and then go, but this is easy for me to do, so I don't need to charge for my time. But I think that what we really have to be really mindful of as it pertains to charging, listen, you are priceless. You are a child of God. 
you have no inherent value that you can put a dollar amount to. So charging what you're worth is, is, is not a phrase that I resonate with. But charge mm-hmm. what the product or service is worth, and that should always include your time. And when you are an entrepreneur or a freelancer or even an artisan, you need to have a dollar amount for an hour of your time. And listen, if you are out here in the business world, that dollar amount is extraordinarily high. It should be $150 on up because an hour of your work time isn't just work with clients, or work on your product, it's also the time you have to spend marketing, figuring out your systems, figuring out your sales processes, and all of those other things that take additional hours that you can't charge for. So your hourly rate must be something that will sustain the time that it takes to create the thing and the time that it takes to put the thing out into the world. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love this conversation. And before we get out of here, what I want you to do is to um, please give us your contact information and how we can reach out to you. Absolutely. So I am the Briar Harvey pretty much everywhere, and you can find me on my website at briarharvey.com. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you, Briar, for coming on in here and having a conversation with me. I've truly enjoyed it. This was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Y'all, y'all need to reach out to Briar. Listen, she gave you her contact information. It is also um, just great to know Briar. I learned so much just in her space. And so definitely you all reach out to her. I am Dr. Stevie Aisha Mills, and I would love for you guys to reach out to me. All you have to do is to go to workwithstevie.com. As long as you know how to spell my first name, you'll get there. So work with S-T-E-V-I-I.com. And I always end the conversation the exact same way, and it literally is the same. Make it a great day. Don't have a great day. Make it a great day. Why? Because you, 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 and yes, all of y'all listening to the conversation with Stevie, too, have the power to do so. We'll see you the next time. Bye.